Hello there, you lovely human being you. I'm Chris from Techspert, and for the past week, my SIM card has been stuffed inside of the iQ11, a fresh new flagship smartphone and the very first Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 handset that I've had my greasy, well calloused hands all over. And going off of this absolute beauty, I've got to say, I'm very much looking forward to reviewing a shagload more 8 Gen 2 blowers in the coming months. This is some proper serious hardcore tech, but enough banging on, I'm going to do a kind of unboxing, even though as you can see it's already out of the box, and I'm going to do a full one week review of the iQ11. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pause, subscribe, and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So, for the sake of this video, just kind of pretend that this was already in there and everything. Alright, so what do you get in the box? Well, you've got one iQ11 phone, you've got a bit of cardboard with some pictures of cars on it, You've got some hardcore adapter action, 120 watts, Type-C USB cable, tasty, and a big old beefy condom case to keep your phone safe from harm. And that right there is everything job done. Let's crack on. Now the iQ11, like many modern flagship smartphones, it's a bit of a big one at 6.8 inches, and it's got a proper bit of weight to it as well. It's a Beatles bollock over 200 grams. So if you're going to stick this thing in your pants pocket, better be wearing a belt just in case. Around the back end, you've got a choice of two different designs. You can either go for your standard glass or a funky vegan leather finish if you grab this here Legend Edition. This thankfully comes with a proper hardcore stain resistant coating. And let me tell you, I have assaulted that arse end with all manner of substances this past week. And it's still looking absolutely pristine. Not even a filthy tandoori could make an impact. And that design is broken up with a formidable bit of race and stripe action. Very bold, very bright, certainly adds some character to that back end. I'm definitely getting strong Rainbow Road vibes out of Mario Kart. Which then makes me think of plunging over the edge of the track into absolute oblivion over and over and over a friggin' again, which then makes me rather anxious, which ain't great. And yeah, not everyone's going to appreciate that colourful strip or the enormous bloody camera bump for that matter. Although at least this doesn't stick out very far at all, which is somewhat of a relief. And I've got to say, I do love the feel of the iQ11 Legend Edition. That fake leather back end gives it a lovely soft touch finish with plenty of texture and also improves the grip. Just as well really, because the size of this thing makes this phone a little cumbersome to clutch. But at least here on the iQ11 you do have a nifty one-handed board, which definitely helps out if you are struggling to use it with just the one mitt. And compared with some of them, it's not too annoying to activate as well. I generally get it first time, which is nice. And this particular feature is part of the amusingly monikered Fun Touch OS, which is built on top of Android 13. And thankfully, this doesn't bugger about with the traditional Google UI too much. You've still got your Google Discover feed. You've still got an apps tray to hide away all of your various bits. You can still drag down that notifications panel, which includes all of your lovely toggles. And as you can see here, you've still got your themed icons and a lot of those fantastic Android 13 features. However, the iQ11 does come with a middling amount of crapware stuffed on, which can be a bit irritating, especially as not all of it can be obliterated from existence. Stuff like Vivo Meat, for instance, that's on there for good. iQ.com, stuff like that, unless of course you've got a third party way of getting rid of it. And also you've got the annoying hot apps and hot games folder, which just tries to get more crud onto your device. Like seriously, is anyone still playing Temple Run in 2022? And I've also seen some quite, shall we say, quirky behaviour from FunTouch OS as well. For instance, for a whole day, the Deezer icon acted a bit drunk and just wouldn't quite line up with the rest of the app icons. Are you all right there, mate? You okay? And the iQ11 can be a little bit lazy when it comes to pushing notifications as well. So for instance, occasionally I'll refresh my inbox to find four or five emails in there just sat there waiting for attention, which it just didn't bother to tell me about. On the flip side though, you've got lots of customization that you can dive on into right here. So for instance, scroll down to lock screen and wallpaper. You've got an always on display that you can mess around with uh, a variety of different styles. Not quite as many as some rivals like OnePlus for instance, but you can schedule it and everything. There's also an online theme store which you can dive on into, uh, although a lot of these do actually cost you proper actual real life money. And several of them are absolutely batshit mental but I am digging how many anime style efforts they've got stuffed in here, which is always a bonus. And you can also piddle about with pretty much all of the animations in the UI from the fingerprint icon animations, not the most exciting a selection. Again, nothing compared with the likes of Oppo and OnePlus, but not bad. The charging animation, some lovely swirly effects in there, and even the USB insertion animation for goodness sakes. And as I've mentioned, that fingerprint sensor, it is an in-display optical effort. And thankfully these days, optical fingerprint sensors are pretty 
bloody good. I've had absolutely no jip whatsoever from the IQ 11. It's swift, it's responsive. My only minor grumble would be that it's positioned quite far down the screen, so you have to kind of stretch for it a bit, but that's like such a pathetic criticism that I'm almost embarrassed to make it. And you've also got some face unlock as well, which is mega fast. As you can see, they generally don't even see the lock screen as long as the lighting conditions aren't too terrible. I highly doubt it's the most secure face unlock option out there. Certainly won't be as secure as the likes of Apple's, but you know what, if you're in a bit of a rush, then it does the job. And for your storage, well, you got 256 gigs of space stuffed inside of the iQ 11, so no issues there whatsoever. No expandable via micro SD, which is a bit of a shame, but then that's pretty much typical, unfortunately, in 2022. And it is UFS 4.0 storage as well, so downloading massive files, installing apps, all of that stuff, super, super swift. So now let's have a squint at the iQ 11 6.78 inch LTPO 3.0 AMOLED display. Bit of a mouthful and a bit of a bloody stunner as well. Like basically all flagship smartphones these days, and even quite a lot of budget-friendly options, you can expect a gorgeous, crisp, punchy picture. Got a 2K resolution, 3200 by 1440, so those visuals are pin sharp. Beautiful contrast, HDR 10 plus stream and support, of course, as you would expect. Those more vivid hues really leap off the panel and slap you right in the chops. Super, super bright as well, so no worries if you are actually living somewhere that's sunny at the moment, unlike my good self. Got wide viewing angles and there's no curvature at the edges as well. This is a perfectly flat display, so it's very well suited to gaming and the rest. Only a teeny weeny selfie cam orifice housed up there at the top. It's a shame it's centrally positioned rather than wedged away in a corner, but barely intrudes. And like pretty much all flagship smartphones in 2022, you've got a stereo speaker setup as well, and it's a beefy bit of audio that's blasted out of them. Let's give you an example. But one absolute stinker stood out from the sea of mediocrity, raking up the place with its outdated hardware and frustrating flaws. I am, of course, banging on about Apple's iPhone SE 2022. It's not the absolute loudest output in the world, but nice and crisp, even on that top volume. There's no tinniness, no distortion or anything like that. So I find it perfectly fine for enjoying a bit of YouTube, Crunchyroll, whatever else on my lunch break. And the iQ11 is Snapdragon sound compatible. So you've got 48 kilohertz lossless streaming via Bluetooth 5.3, as well as super low latency support for gaming. I've had absolutely no complaints at all using Deezer to stream high fidelity tracks and ditto, it's been perfect for gaming. Thus giving me even less excuse when I'm getting my nuts blasted off by school kids in Call of Duty or by enormous f***ing dragon things in Genshin Impact. And that's all thanks to Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset which is stuffed inside of the iQ11, one of the very first smartphones to come launching with this microprocessor which is absolutely packed to the armpits with clever bollocks tech. And that's supported here on the iQ11 by the 8 or 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM. This right here, my review model, is the 16 giga. So that performance, absolutely flawless. The gaming chops are easily at least as good as the very best gaming smartphones out there right now, the likes of Asus's ROG Phone 6 and 6D Ultimate. I really don't think I saw a single frame drop when I was playing through Genshin Impact for a good couple of hours, even bumping that graphics all the way up to the maximum detail levels and the maximum frame rate. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. But what really impressed me was just how cool the iQ11 remains, even after a couple of hours of full-on Genshin action. Because last year's Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, all of the phones that that was stuffed inside, they tended to get quite toasty after maybe just 20 or 30 minutes of gaming. But this bad boy, you could game on it all afternoon long and there's barely even a trace of heat anywhere on this blower. And of course that'll be partially down to the extremely energy efficient Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and also partly down to the iQ11's vapor chamber coolant, complete with not one, not two, but three graphite layers. Oof, your bugger. And you've got yourself a feature-packed gaming mode on the iQ11 as well with the usual performance modes to swap between, lots of customization options for the touch sensitivity, etc. Now for some supported titles like Call of Duty Mobile, you've also got an eSports mode you can activate to ensure you're not disturbed at any point, just again boost the performance and everything. You've also got the 4D game vibration setting as well, which just adds a bit of extra haptic feedback, improves the immerse immersibility. Is that a word? Surely that's not a word. And here on the iQ11, you've also got a frame rate boost feature powered by a separate V2 chip, which can apparently interpolate extra frames and boost the visuals to 90 or 120 hertz, even if a game natively maxes out at 60 FPS like Genshin Impact. But don't get too excited though, because it only works with compatible games and Genshin Impact certainly ain't one of them, neither is Call of Duty Mobile. And those are basically the only two games I play, so it's a bit like, meh. 
Now battery life is another area where the IQ11 absolutely blew my bollocks off. You've got a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity cell stuffed inside of that almighty frame. And that combined with the energy efficiency of that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, men, I was never left wanting towards the end of a day. Even a really long arse day as well with lots of screen on time, I found I never stumbled to bed with less than around 30% battery life remaining. And that's with a fair bit of video streaming, audio streaming, the occasional bit of gaming as well. You'd have to absolutely bloody punish the IQ11 in order to completely drain it in just a single 24 hour stint. And then when you do need to charge it back up, well you got that 120 watt flash charge support. Flash, ah, it's quite fucking fast in it. Da 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 da. So yeah, bung a cable in there for like 10 minutes and it'll really boost that battery in a pinch. And there's no wireless charging support, unfortunately. But apart from that, no complaints. So let's finish this IQ11 review and unboxing with a squint at the camera tech headed by a 50 megapixel Samsung GN5 sensor as also stuffed inside of the regular Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus. You've got a bit of optical image stabilization built in there as well as so quite handy for your low light shots and if your hand just tends to jitter quite a bit. And while it's undoubtedly quite a dense camera UI, it feels really nicely laid out, very streamlined, very smartly organized, so everything is where you would expect. And while you've got plenty of bonus camera modes to flick between, as you can see, that's quick and easy to do so. And I've got to say, photo quality on the whole, pretty good stuff. Unlike the Galaxy S22 phones, you don't get that heavy post-processing, so images look more natural. Not quite as poppy as what you'll get with Samsung's phones, and arguably not as attractive, but closer to what you'll actually see with your peepers. More vibrant subjects still look pretty, and there's certainly more than enough fine detail packed into every picture. You could also add a bit of bulky background blur shenanigans using the portrait mode, which works pretty well with both the primary sensor and also that dedicated 13 meg telephoto portrait lens. Although as this features a 2x optical zoom, you'll need to take a few steps back. It is a good way to take casual shots of subjects that don't want you right up in their face. Like this here, Moggy, who actually has her own ready Instagram account with more followers than I could ever dream of. You could also use this lens to shoot general far away stuff, but don't expect the same level of impressive detail that you will get from rivals like the Pixel 7 Pro, especially once you start to digitally crop in. Back to the main camera sensor, and this worked well even with sharp contrast to contend with. I rarely saw any kind of saturation, even when snapping against a bright sky. At night time, the IQ11 isn't up there with a pixel, but it isn't bad. You'll get some flaring and f**k a battery with strong light sources, and some grain creeping in when things get proper dim, but as long as you keep your hands still, the night mode can compensate somewhat. Make sure your subject stays still in ambient light as well, otherwise you will get a fuzzy finish that ruins a shot. While the focus occasionally muffed up in softer light, so you'll want to give it a second or two just to make sure that it is properly locked on. The IQ11's 8 megapixel ultra wide angle alternative is perfectly fine with the usual caveats that the colours will be warmer and it does struggle with HDR and night snaps. All good though if you just want to fit more into frame and the lighting isn't total arse. As for video, you can shoot up to 8K resolution footage like quite a few flagship phones these days with pretty decent stabilisation. I tend to stick to 4K res though which offers smoother results while still boasting crisp visuals. Even moving and shooting doesn't make things disgustingly shaky. If the lighting ain't great, then yeah, the picture quality will be quite grainy and not very pretty at all. There's no comparison to the best phones out there like the iPhones and the Oppo Find X5 series. But overall, it's fairly respectable for your home movies, especially as the audio capture is clear without much intrusion from wind and other irritations. And last up, if we flip around to the front, you've got a 16 megapixel selfie snapper. Just remember to turn the bloody beauty mode off, otherwise you'll look horribly smooth like someone just stretched latex all over your mug. You also get quite soft and grainy results at night time, or with more ambient indoor light, so nothing too unexpected to be honest. And I had absolutely no complaints from friends or family members when I was Skyping or Zooming using the IQ11. You can get a perfectly crisp full HD picture with this bad boy and again the audio pickup, no worries. And there you have it my lovelies, that in a quin little nutshell is the IQ11, one of the very first smartphones to come packing the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset and an overall absolutely beautiful bugger. Now I'm reviewing this ahead of the official launch, so any of those little software glitches and anything should hopefully be sorted out by the time it hits retail. And to begin with, it is going to be select regions only, the likes of Malaysia and India, but you should be able to import one without too much bother and hopefully it will spread to other countries soon. 
So anywho, that's what I reckon of the IQ 11. What do you guys think? Are you tempted? Definitely be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.